everyone and welcome to this episode of the Kairos podcast. It's a pleasure to join you all from across Europe and the Middle East. I'm in Glasgow just now and it is high summer time so that's the reason for the sound of rain and wind in the background and the reason why I've got so many layers on. Um, so I am um, yeah, my, my name is Katie and I was part of the university outreach in Glasgow, which is now called GCO. And that was a big part of my university experience and my journey of faith um, through those years of studying and uh, building friendships within our UCO. Um, and the passage that we're going to look at is John 3 verses 1 through 17. There's, there's actually quite a lot that's within it, so I'll just first of all read read the passage and then I'll give you a little bit of uh, my own personal thoughts, insight into it. So, John 3. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, we testify to what we have seen, but you still do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of the earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn it, but to save the world through him. So there, there is quite a lot from that passage that you could pull out and digest. I think um, passage eight uh, is quite a striking part of it, it, talking about the wind blows and you hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it is coming from or where it is going to. Um, so I think that speaks of uncertainty and I think that's quite relatable for this time where a lot of our plans have been cancelled or changed and we really have uncertainty about the future. We have uncertainty about uh, restrictions and lockdown and quarantine times ahead. Um, there's really quite a lot that is very uncertain. Um, and in, in verse 16, which is quite a well-known passage for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life in that you can insert for God so loved the world or for God so loved us first for God so loved each individual person uh, it doesn't speak about specifics of who that relates to it's really for all nations um, for God so loved every single country every single language and um, it does not say for God so loved the people who are doing an excellent job already it doesn't say for God so loved those who are getting it right every single time and um, it doesn't say for God 
only loved the church goers. Um, it really is a, a wider message than that. And so for me, I read that as for God so loved us every single time we stumble. God so loved us even through our failures. Um, I just quite a hopeful message. And I don't know if any of you have just been through an exam phase with your studies or something similar. Um, for me, after my time of studying at university, I went on to do further exams with accountancy, which is my field of work, my field of study. And um, definitely through the past few years, I've had a number of challenges and um, definitely a number of exam failures, more than once. Um, but the good news is that that's not our identity. Our identity is with him, is with God. Um, so we are not each one of our failures. We are not the number of times that we have stumbled. And I think that, you know, if you read it from, we'd read that verse through that lens of for God so loved us in our grubbiness. Um, for God so loved us when, you know, it was all a mess. Um, and I think that's quite relevant to where we are just now in the world when there's really quite a lot of grubbiness. Um, there's quite a lot of uncertainty and we don't know which um, which way the wind is coming from, which way the wind is going to. Um, but that actually God has seen this from the outset and um, that he's already loved us through and loved us from the, the very first um, the first point. So that's just a few of my thoughts on this passage and God bless. Papa, papa, papa.